This installation video will cover the installation of the QBOT on the Handy Quilter Moxie sewing machine on the Handy Quilter loft frame. The first step of the installation is to install the QBOT drive assemblies to the carriage and the sewing machine. Let's start with the carriage. First, remove the sewing machine and the lower carriage from the loft frame. Place the carriage on a table as shown with the stitch regulation encoder facing you. This is the rear of the carriage. Using a 3 16 inch hex or allen wrench, remove the wheels from the carriage. It will look like this when the wheels are removed. Next, thread the quarter 20 by 3 and a half inch screws provided in the Cubot hardware kit into the threaded holes in the carriage. Screw them in all the way so it looks like this. Now, place the wheels onto the screws as shown and thread on a quarter 20 nut to secure the wheel. Tighten securely as shown here and here. Now slide on a one and a half inch aluminum spacer and a five eighths inch long spacer as shown here. Next, place the x-axis drive assembly as shown here. The x-axis drive assembly has been machined to fit here. It is a different shape than the y-axis drive assembly. Secure the drive assembly with a washer and nut as shown here. Tighten securely. We're all done with attaching the first drive assembly. While the carriage is still on the table, it is time to install the Y-axis drive wire holders. Remove the screw as shown here. Place the rear drive wire holder as shown. Note the direction that the small attachment finger is pointing. The finger needs to point in this direction so the drive wire eyelet does not slip off the finger. Now thread the screw back into the carriage as shown here. Tighten securely, but do not over tighten. Next is to mount the other Y-axis drive wire holder to the front of the carriage. Remove the screw as shown here. This is on the same rail as the rear wire holder. Place the front Y-axis wire holder as shown. Note that the finger is pointing toward the front of the carriage. Tighten securely, but do not over tighten. Now it's time to mount the Y-axis drive assembly to the sewing machine. The drive assembly mounts to this side of the sewing machine. We first need to mount the Y-axis drive motor bracket to the sewing machine. With a helper, tilt the machine over so that it is lying on its side. The front wheel attachment looks like this. Remove the bolt that is holding the wheel to the machine. There is a square nut captured in the sewing machine. When the bolt is removed, this nut may fall out, so be ready. Next, remove the bolt from the wheel. There is a thin washer or shim on either side of the wheel. Do not misplace those washers. We'll need them in the next step. Now place the bolt through the Y-axis drive motor bracket, then slide on one of the small washers, then slide on the wheel, then the other small washer, then tighten into the square nut as shown. Tighten just until snug. We still have to attach the back end of the bracket. Now remove the bolt that is holding on the rear wheel. This part is not as tricky because there is no square nut to worry about. But there still are washers that need to go back on either side of the wheel. Move the bracket into place as shown. The bolt goes through the bracket, then through the outer washer, then through the wheel, then through the inner washer, then threads into the sewing machine. Now you can tighten these bolts securely. After tightening, make sure the wheels spin freely. If they don't, then more than likely one of the small washers is missing. Now we are ready to mount the Y-axis drive assembly. In this picture, I have the machine elevated on a pedestal because the drive assembly hangs below the bottom of the sewing machine and would otherwise hit the tabletop. You can do this step by either placing the machine near the edge of a table or by placing the carriage back on the loft frame and placing the machine back on the carriage. I recommend placing the machine back on the carriage on the frame for safety. With the other drive assembly in hand, place a quarter 20 by two and a quarter inch screw through the drive assembly as shown, then slide on an inch and an eighth aluminum spacer. The drive assembly then attaches to the bracket as shown. Secure with two quarter 20 nuts as shown here and here. Moving along now, you are ready to attach the QBOT head to the back of the sewing machine. In preparation, remove the plastic contact cover that came with your sewing machine. Remove the screws that hold the cover, take off the cover, and then replace the screws that hold the circuit board to the machine. It should look like this. 
Next, using three 5mm by 8mm long screws that came in your Cubot installation kit, attach the bracket as shown. Thread each of the screws in loosely at first, then give them a final secure tightening once all of them have been started. This will ensure that the bracket is aligned properly. This bracket integrates the signal connection to the sewing machine, so Cubot will automatically start and stop the sewing machine at the beginning and ending of quilting. When installed, the Cubot should look like this. Now is a good time to secure the DB9 contact connector to the I.O. port at the top of the Cubot head. Use a small Phillips head or plus screwdriver to secure the plug to the port. Now let's turn to the top front of the sewing machine. There are three threaded holes on the top of the machine for mounting the tablet stand. Place the tablet stand assembly on top of the machine and secure with three 4mm by 10mm long screws from the mounting hardware kit. Just like when we mounted the head on the back, thread in each of the three screws loosely first, then tighten securely. The tablet stand is adjustable in tilt angle and can expand to accept a wide variety of tablet sizes. Now we are ready to mount the x-axis wire holders. Standing at the back of the frame, this is the right hand side. Attach the corresponding wire holder as shown here. Thread in two 4mm by 10mm long screws loosely as shown and then secure tightly. Moving to the left hand side of the frame, repeat the same procedure as done for the right. Thread in loosely, then tighten securely. Now we're ready to install the x-axis drive wire. Place one end of the drive wire on the drive wire bracket as shown. Next, wrap the wire twice around the x-axis drive wheel as shown here. Note that the wire enters and exits from the bottom of the drive wheel. While keeping some tension on the drive wire with one hand, place the hook end of the tensioner through the other eyelet, then place the loop or eye end of the tensioner onto the other drive wire bracket as shown. Tension the drive wire by turning the center barrel of the tensioner only. The hook end of the tensioner should never twist as this will impart additional stresses to the drive wire and will cause premature failure of the drive wire. Moving on to the y-axis drive wire, the procedure is the same. Mount one end of the drive wire to the front drive wire mounting bracket, then wrap twice around the drive wheel as shown, entering and exiting off the bottom of the drive wheel. This step is a little tricky, so be patient as possible. Then finally tension the wire by turning the barrel of the tensioner only. With the mechanical connections all completed, we're ready to make the final wiring connections. Attach the Y-axis drive motor cable to the Y-axis drive assembly as shown here. Make sure you hear the click as it connects. Connect the other end to the top of the Cubot head in the Y-axis drive motor port. Again, make sure it clicks into place. Next, connect the X-axis drive motor cable to the X-axis drive assembly as shown here and then attach to the top of the Cubot head in the X-axis drive motor port. At this point, also connect the power supply cable to the top of the Cubot head. It connects to the port marked Power. Now we're ready to tidy up the installation. Place a strain relief pad as shown here to secure the Y-axis drive motor cable. Next, move the carriage all the way forward and place a strain relief pad on the carriage rail as shown here. Secure the X-axis drive cable and the power supply cord with a wire tie. Finally, move the carriage forward and back and make sure that none of the cables interfere with the movement of the carriage. Please consult the instructional DVD that came with your Cubot for instructions on using your new Cubot. New video content is available on YouTube. Just search for Cubot V3. Please consider joining our user group on groups.io. Search for Cubot Squad. Also, consider joining the Facebook user group. Search for We Love Cubot.